hold it. I'll hold it. He talks about Rona Ambrose here. That's your notes. That's your notes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Madame Lieutenant Governor, uh, Mr. Mayor Tory, uh, Madame Hubert and the board members, uh, Mr. Greenspan and your team, and a remarkable contribution to do to rational, intelligent, and committed reflection in this country. Honorees, Madame Ambrose, Dr. Bernstein, Mr. Cope, Madame Mohamed, et uh, Madame Liv et Madame Pugliese pour nous avoir donné un témoignage si émouvant, si inspirant. <applaudissements> Mesdames, Messieurs, euh, fonctionnaires, gens du secteur privé, gens de la société civile, et permettez-moi de dire, dans le cas des fonctionnaires, ou des gens qui sont au service de l'État, combien ils doivent être fiers de participer à ce qui est essentiel dans l'élaboration des politiques publiques, c'est-à-dire la réflexion. The last few days were quite busy uh, on the spatial stage as well as um, the political stage in international realities. There was a budget from the government on, of Ontario. Um, we saw the black hole which gave the final jab to the Society for Flat Earth. <laughs> and in the UK, for the first time, we might see May's end before the end of April. Uh, <laughs> Madame Laflamme, uh, when you refer to uh, what I tried to do in my life, I have the impression I'm 100 years old. Um, but I can tell you from since 1976, everything has changed in less than two generations. In Quebec's life, in Canada's life, as well as in my personal life in many ways. But there's a sense of continuity um, in what I've done through the years, which is a tremendous respect for public policy, for its demands, its elaboration, and the challenges of their implementation. Les politiques publiques nous touchent individuellement, tous les jours, que ce soit le congé de maternité, l'aide sociale, ce qui nous reste d'argent après l'impôt. Uh, and in my case, recently, I realized that I came from eating chips and coke when I was young, watching late night news, to eventually taking red wine with dark chocolate. <laughs> and then came the Canadian uh, nutritional guide, and I would take uh, chocolate milk with oatmeal cookies <laughs> and now I'm stuck with having to take carrot juice, celery sticks and grains. <laughs> There's no lack of public policy substance around. Growth and the environment, especially when it relates to uh, the awesome situation of climate change which has become the source uh, of large consensus as to its causes and effects. Technological change on manpower that you've heard about, invasion of privacy through technology, addressing wealth redistribution, and the foreign policy of this country in a context where we might have to reevaluate how we cope with our neighbors and allies. All of this has to be done through the democratic process. 
So I'll take the three and a half minutes left to me now to talk about democracy. I think it's worthwhile going back to the basics in the context in which we live. Not really in Canada, but really in the international stage, even with allies and neighbors. History has it that um, some people in the suburb of Athens decided that they would have the right to vote and the right to be candidates. And then came over history the concept of equality under law. The Romans created the complexity of public administration. And Montesquieu had the brilliance of establishing the separation of powers between legislative executive branch and the independence of the judiciary system, including its capacity to oversee the public administration. And then the use of violence in society, in democratic society, has been defined as only legitimate when it is done by the arm of police, accountable to government, accountable to the public, in the context of the application of the rule of law. All of this are blocks of an edifice. The edifice which contains the capacity to have debates on fundamental issues, to make choices, to make decisions about these issues. That's what public policy is about. But there's a cement to that fragile edifice. And that cement is the unwritten rules that have to be abided to. These are norms, these are codes agreed about, often unwritten, and always not implement, implementable by law. Tolerance, the adversary is not an enemy. Respect and forbearance, self-control in the use of power, civility, courteousness, politeness, cooperation where it's possible, openness and transparency in the context of dealing with the public good. These virtues are democratic, democratic virtues. Politics is a battle of egos for the public good. It should not be a battle for power itself, nor should it be the place for the arrogance of the narcissic. Because democracy is fragile, citizens must be on alert to identify the temptation of authoritarianism amongst those who want elected office or who, who are elected they don't necessarily abide once they're elected to these codes, which is why we have to see them coming. We have to look at their capacity for tolerance, forbearance, civility, respect, cooperation, and transparency. We're not in real danger here in Canada, but we have to be guarded constantly against populism, an ideology that satisfies itself with giving a simplistic framework of what it is and what will it do. And that framework is simple. They are the defenders of a pure people against a corrupt elite. That's pretty contrasting with a vision of a pluralistic society. The populists have no need to debate choices, nuance, or complexity. The populist will put in question individual social rights without real debate, and you will find them at the extreme right as well as the extreme left, as is the case in France, quite obviously. 
I'm quite optimistic as to whether, where Canada will stand in that context. We're not the Philippines of Duterte. We're not Venezuela of Chavez or Maduro, or some Eastern country uh, in Europe, which is attacking the judiciary or the freedom of the press. But geography, close geography, shows us the dangers. Watch out, nurture freedom of the press. Criticize courageously the shortcuts of the social media and teach tolerance, civility, respect, forbearance, cooperation, and transparency. That is a job for schools. It is a job for academia. It is a job for associations, intellectuals, families. It is a job for all of us who believe in progress. Thank you.